If you've been struggling to kill the bone ball on the bone zone, then here's a guide for you. First of all, get rid of the curse and check the pinned comment in case I made an update on what is better or worse. Kicking it off, we have Gains Boros. For this, you just lock it in, you take Silent Old Sanctuary, and then you just run it down. Roughly at the 30 second mark, I would recommend you checking on how it's going. I do have wings, I got this from my first level up, so I will be a little bit faster down there. For you, you just pick whatever helps you out killing the ball. But as you can see, I will roughly meet up with him the moment I'm down there. And there we go, there he is. That means since I had more movement speed, you have to walk to the right a little bit earlier that you can meet up with him. But aside from this, I will now just kite him, but I, I don't really need to kite him. Oh, Duplicator is very good, but you pretty much just want to stand in front of him and attack him. As long as you're very close to him, well, there you go, that was already it. But as long as you're very close to him, the Heaven Sword will always hit him and this was a kill in 1 minute and 20 seconds. As another option we have Red Death, yet again I will take Silent Old Sanctuary. This one works a little bit different. The reason is that you mainly use him to kill most of the enemies while shooting the Death Spirals as close as possible to him into him. Since Red Death has an incredible amount of movement speed, I will actually go to the left very early in comparison to gains where I just ran down. And as you can see, I have to go to the left to catch up with him. And he should roughly be here. Ah, uh, there we go. And all I will do now is I actually want to collect the experience to get a little bit stronger. But aside from that, I just mainly want to make sure that nothing really runs into him. I mean, if it happens, it happens, you know. Aside from this, you want to be very close. You can hit, I would say, roughly three death spirals into him if you're close the moment it's cast. So just get used to the cast cycle. And then the result is rather similar to Heaven Sword. Heaven Sword has more damage since it can critically strike. And you pretty much always hit two of them. Uh, Turner's box is very good, so let's take that. But yes, gains will be faster than Red Death. But Red Death is overall a comfort pick that just helps you that the ball doesn't start crowing if you, for example, miss a lot of the Heaven Sword hits and they just run into him. With a bad level up choice, you can simply reroll, and I will go for the spinach here. Given that we have 169%, it doesn't make a ginormous difference, but yet again, a 130 roughly. In case this is confusing why this was a 130, which is very close to the Heaven Sword, the weapon is weaker, but since we have so much movement speed, we got very early to the ball. Another great option is Leda, and yet again, I will go for Silent Old Sanctuary. With this one, you can already walk diagonally. His movement speed is very low, so this will take a long time to get there. Checking at 1 minute 30, we can see that a bone ball is below me. Yes, it took a very long time to travel down here. Leda is incredibly slow. Most of the secret characters have 20 to 40% movement speed, or in case of Red Death, it's even more. So, yeah, this guy is very slow. This should be roughly the point where the ball will appear. I would always recommend checking multiple times to make sure that he doesn't pass you, especially on someone like Leda. You want to make sure that you get him. But do you see this damage? Yeah, this will not take very long. And there we go. That was a few seconds, but it did take longer than the other options, simply because- wow. Simply because Lida is so slow. Next up we have Marabio, and I will take Slash. This may sound weird, but Slash increases the damage of the Thousand Edge by an insane amount, which compensates for the cooldown reduction and for the might loss. But to be honest, there's not a big difference. You can probably run both scenarios a couple of times, and the result will be fairly close to each other. Marabio will also be the last secret character that I show off, since I assume that either you have all the secret characters, or at least one of those that I've shown off. With his high movement speed, you can simply run down, you don't have to do anything, just make sure that you actually check, at around 45 to 50 seconds, you should meet up with the ball, and this is where he will appear, and there he is. Now, Morabio is a little bit more complicated, because he will stop shooting the moment there are too many projectiles. So just make sure that sometimes you have to walk back. But the moment he starts shooting again, 
turn to the left side and shoot into the ball. And there we go, he's already dead, one minute in. For the non-secret characters, what I recommend in general, like here we will have Ember Joe, pick up Game Killer, because every single time you level up on Ember Joe, he loses to a mount, and then you just walk over to the merchant here and you buy everything. And there you go, you now have 5 weapons that are maxed out, and whenever you collect experience, it will shoot to a random enemy. With the amount that you're shooting, there's a high chance that you will just kill everything, Meaning that the ball will get constantly hit by all the experience that you gather. And there's the ball. All you have to do now is, well, wiggle around a little bit to keep it in place. But aside from this, you don't really have to do a lot. Sometimes you can walk off and collect the experience. Or you can make sure that the enemies are not getting too, too close to not get consumed. But aside from this, I usually just prefer staying here, wiggling around, and now we wait. And there we go, less than 2 minutes in and a non-secret character has defeated the ball. Next up we have Porter, here's the same story pretty much. We take Game Killer again, we go to the merchant and we will buy out the entire merchant. With negative 95% cooldown, you're pretty much promo firing like crazy. So while this character has a lot less amount than Ambro Joe, she makes it up by just shooting out constantly like crazy. And there's the ball. I will wiggle around yet again. Whenever there are masses of experience around, I will walk there and get it, but it's really not necessary. And there we go, one and a half minutes in, and it's done. Next up we have Lama Ladonna, we will go for Silent Old Sanctuary, and our goal will be that we max out the axe as much as possible, that means I will also use rerolls to get further levels into it, and afterwards you will just stay below the ball, and your goal will be that you deal so much damage to it, that it outweighs the bonus HP that it has by growing. There's no way that you kill all the enemies like with the other weapons, for this the axe is just too inconsistent, you could make it work if you for example max out Empty Tome, but Empty Tome is unlikely to be obtained either way, and maxing it out will take a lot of bonus levels. There's the ball. So what I will do now is I will just stand below it, and hopefully I will be able to get more levels into my axe like here. What you mainly want is penetration, to make sure that you can actually kill the enemies, and one thing that you kind of want to attempt to do, but it's it's slightly difficult, turn yourself to the right side always. This will throw your axes to the right side and deal with enemies that are in front of the balls, so at least a little bit of bonus HP is not obtained by the ball. Sometimes like in cases like here, you can turn around and kill them for an experience boost. I will not bother with it too too much, the axe will give you more penetration which has a lot of value to you. This doesn't matter for the current wave right now, but the future waves will start spawning a lot more enemies, and there it's crucial that you manage to kill most of them. So in cases like here just turn around and pick up the experience that was left on the floor, here we have the bonus damage on the axe, 20 damage is a huge difference as you can see, we just went to 100 damage per hit and we will hit the ball always 3 times. While this may look as good as with Red Death, where we dealt roughly the same amount of damage a little bit more, keep in mind that we can't really kill the enemies, and they will keep running into the ball. Don't turn around too often to clear the enemies, every single enemy that is on the screen will not spawn. In this game, if you don't kill the enemies, it will not spawn additional enemies, unless there is a new wave that comes in, and the max amount for that wave is higher. Empty Tome is always an amazing pickup, I prefer this even over taking another level in the axe, but this also depends on the situation. And there we go, roughly 3.5 minutes in, definitely took some time, but hey, all we had was an axe. I will throw in another Ambrojo run, where I didn't go for additional weapons, just in case you don't have the merchant for whatever reason. I don't even know if that's possible, but that will be the last one. Pretty much for most non-secret characters, it will take a lot longer to do this entire thing, since it relies on multiple factors, one being how many skeletons actually walk into the ball, and how frequently your game killer will hit them. 
Another issue is that you will start taking damage over time by random enemies walking up to you and this can result in your death. If you notice that it goes too long then I would just recommend you starting over or you go through the process of unlocking one of the secret characters. And there we go, three and a half minutes in, not amazing, but hey, it's still relatively fast. One last thing, if for whatever reason you can't do these, maybe you're missing crucial parts, all you need is infinite corridor, which halves the enemy HP, and then you have to make sure that you also have very strong weapons alongside with it, since halving is great, but if the enemy constantly grows, then you also need to give it a finishing blow, so take something like Heaven Sword, Holy Wand, Thousand Edge, whatever you've seen in this video pretty much, they did really well on the wolf characters. So, I hope you enjoyed this guide, and if you did, Hey, consider subscribing or at least check out one to two other videos and see if you like my content. See you the next time and I'm out.